Hey, it is Stacy Cole and Carol Hughes. We are back. We're filling in for the vacationing Tony. And boy, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, Carol. This story is interesting to me. And interesting, I think, to a whole lot of people across the country because we've all been following the Alec Murdoch story. Yeah, and it's getting ugly and bigger and bigger. I always liken the stories that we talk about to being like an octopus with tentacles all over the place, like the Long Island serial killer, um, that he's got tentacles all over the nation. Like, we're just going to figure out so many things about him. And then when we focus in on Alex Murdaugh, it's like the tentacles are are everywhere. Like he is touching everything, but this time it's not him. And I'll explain what it is in case, in case people are not up to speed. Some allegations have come out of jury tampering. So Rebecca, Rebecca Hill is her name, but she likes to go by Becky of the Colton County um, Circuit Court. She is a county clerk there. She has yet to respond to allegations of jury tampering in the double murder trial of Alex Murdaugh. She has actually hired two attorneys, two very prominent attorneys, and it looks like things are going to proceed. Now, her co-author, because she's writing a book, Neil R. Gordon is his name, the co-author, is defending her, describing her as a person of integrity and genuine character. Now, Gordon appeared on court TV shortly after Murdaugh's defense attorneys filed a motion requesting a new trial for the convicted killer. They are claiming that Miss Hill tampered with the jury because she was motivated by fame and the desire to secure a book deal. So uh, a quick I, question oh, there. Do you think that that's true? Does it look that way to you? I mean, the allegations yeah. are one thing, but did she really? Yeah, it's it's looking more and more like that with everything that's coming out. And I'm coming from a little bit of personal experience. I chatted with Tony about this in one of our segments. Um, I've got jury duty coming up in two weeks. And I've been reading some of the information that they sent out ahead of jury duty. And it talks about basically your responsibility as a juror. So If you're going to serve on a jury, you have to uphold the law and especially a clerk of court. Oh, my goodness. She has to know. And she's worked. We looked it up. She has worked in the system as a county clerk of courts since 2020. This is not a new position for her. She knows what the guidelines are. And if these allegations are true, she has absolutely screwed the pooch on this. This is terrible. And the we'll fact that she's writing this book is she's, you know, she's going to financially gain from a trial. Which you can't do. Right. You I would think in her position, that. like if you or I wanted to write a book about it, that's one thing. We're not the county yeah. clerk. But when she's involved with this case at the level, it's her employment. Absolutely. Like, and now you're turning around and making money off of it. That doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't seem right. Uh, The book is a tell-all book titled Behind the Doors of Justice, The Murdaugh Murders. It was released on August 1st. By the way, I I went to her website and I sent a message um, asking if we could do an interview that we'd love to talk about her book. I haven't heard back yet. Well, and they wasted no time getting that book out. Have you ever tried to write a book? Like, Have you ever had an idea like, I want to write a book? And you sit down and the first chapter took you like a week. You're like, yeah, uh, I don't want to write a book anymore. Exactly. Like the first couple pa- pages took a week. So yeah, no, it's not. It's not an easy task. So they must have sat down and just pounded this baby out. They've yeah. been working on it before the trial was over. That's what I'm wondering. Now, Neil Gordon, again, he's the co-author Uh, He expressed his shock upon learning about these allegations and what Murdaugh's attorneys believed to be her motive. He explained that they had self-published this book using their own money, which was about $30,000, and Simon & Schuster is yet to provide that $200,000 check as suggested by the defense. So what's happening now is 
There is a motion filed by Murdaugh's lawyers that alleges that Miss Hill provided jurors with business cards from reporters during the trial and that she traveled to New York City with three jurors for interviews after the verdict. That's a huge no-no. Whoa. Yeah. Now, she has not released that official statement, but it was stated to Court TV that the allegations are untrue. Gordon revealed that she hired legal counsel and a statement addressing the allegations is planned in the near future. So we're going to be hanging on watching for that. And here's another interesting thing. Um, Gordon described Miss Hill as a very spiritual person, mentioned that she prayed with her staff. Separation of church and state here. Okay. Um, when asked that? if she ever prayed with the jury, she informed him that no legal entity is allowed to have prayer with the jury, underscoring the distinction. So, okay. <sighs> There's just a lot of weirdness here, isn't there? I think so, too. In the fact, like, well, we had to use our own money to publish it. We haven't gotten the $200,000 yet. Mm-hmm. But even that said, if you did spend your own $30,000 to self-publish, you're planning on making the 30000 back. Yes. You did this and, for and a more. reason. Exactly. They're you selling know, the goes book. Into They're not giving it away. Well, exactly. They're not doing off of this. And why was she traveling to New York with some of the jury people? Right. Like, I get why the jury's traveling to New York. All of them, the Today Show, Good Morning America, everybody wants to talk to them. Absolutely. But she shouldn't be talking to anybody. I'm surprised they even let her go. It seems like a, a conflict of interest. Yeah, that's a really good point. Now, um, going back to some of the allegations against her, in case people aren't aware, uh, they are alleging that Miss Hill instructed the jury to closely observe Murdaugh's actions and motions when he took the stand, implying his guilt. It also claims that she had private conversations with the jury for person and repeatedly solicited jurors' opinions about Murdaugh's guilt or innocence. You can't be going, hey, jurors, what do you think so far? Do you think he's guilty? Or No, especially not as the clerk of courts. No. What are you doing? That's all in the jury's hand. Now, if they have some questions at some point when they're deliberating, they will ask for clarification. They can do that. But you can't go in there and say, hey, so what do you guys think? Do you think he's guilty? Do you think he's innocent? You can't well, and then do there's that. this other part that she would not allow smokers to have a smoke break until after a verdict was reached. Well, didn't they reach the verdict like in three hours? That's weird, too. You know, if you I I don't know if 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 you are around smokers, but when when they haven't had a cigarette in a while and they need one, it becomes a problem. Well, they probably, those who smoked, one and one immediately, like before we start deliberating, we want to go smoke. And that makes me think she said, no, you're going to go deliberate right now. Yeah. And so then that's an incentive. Let's get through this. I get, that's what I'm assuming is the problem with that. Yeah, wow. it's the whole thing is just is really screwy. Um, there's just a lot pointing at some issues here, and you cannot do this stuff as a clerk of courts. And that's it, it, we're not, you know, it's not saying so much that that Murdaugh is innocent of the crimes. It's that he didn't receive a fair trial. You know, the evidence against him may not change. But jury tampering is a real issue, and you can't do that. Not in this country. Well, he could have gotten a new trial for, and I don't know all what they read to the jury, but I'm assuming they were sequestered somewhat. Like, you can't be reading newspaper stories right. about this. You can't be talking to your friends about this. That's pretty standard. So if one of the juries would have been talking to their friend about it, they'd have gotten knocked off the jury. Absolutely. But then when she's talking to them, then I guess that would, to them, imply, well, I guess we can talk to her because she's with the court. Oh, yeah. So what, what she's mess. done is like all that money they spent to take that to trial. Could you imagine how much that cost? And now the defense knows 
what the prosecution, like they have no ace up their sleeve anymore. They've shown all their cards. Mm -hmm. So now they know. I yeah. don't know. Like this whole thing could be turned upside down because of her. It is. And Tony brought up a really good point that they may need to look at other cases that she's, you know, been part of. What did she do this with other cases that maybe weren't so high profile? They're going to have possible. to look at everything. Yeah. I mean, it's like finding out that your food's contaminated. Now you've got to go track down everybody who's touched it to make sure that they're okay. That's exactly what's going to have to happen here. So uh, we'll keep you updated on, on all of this, but it's just an absolute disaster. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.